How's it going guys? It's Jeff Chen with MMA Shredded. How's it going guys? It's Rob here with Combat Self-Defense. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about situational sparring. Situational sparring is exactly what it sounds like. Instead of doing straightforward boxing or grappling or whatever, you try to replicate what you would likely find in a realistic scenario or out on the streets if you prefer. In this case, I demonstrate sparring in my regular training gear, then with my regular street clothes on, and then while I have a backpack full of stuff on. I'm gonna go over how each sparring session was different and how it was the same. And I'm gonna explain why I think it's important that every once in a while you practice drills like this. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications turned on, and let's get started. All right, so these first couple rounds, it's just regular MMA sparring. No restrictions, no special rules, just moving around, loosening up. This right here is Mr. Tommy, you should recognize him. He's a veteran of this channel. We spar all the time. So at this point, he knows how I move, I know how he moves. There's not really gonna be any surprises here. We're just warming up. What I'm trying to establish here is a baseline, both for him and for you as a viewer, to see how I like to spar. And as you can tell, I like to move around a lot, I like to throw kicks, and I like to wait for my opponent to throw himself off balance and then punish him for his audacity. And as you can see there, Tommy got himself a throw, which, while cool, was unacceptable, so there I get my own. Of course, we're good sports about it, so I pick him right back up. Now we get into a bit of a kicking war. I land a good one to the head, fake another one with the other side, and now he starts checking my kicks before I can fire them off. So I decide, screw this, I'm gonna drop him to the ground again. Tommy's a lot of fun to take to the ground, not so much because he doesn't know what to do, but because once he gets to the ground, he kind of freaks out. And in that one moment of hesitation, that's when I punish him again. Here we go, I'm staying on the outside, avoiding his punches, firing long straight punches down the line, just trying to keep him on the back foot to make sure he doesn't rush towards me. Again, I like putting something in his face so he's too scared to throw anything at me. Right there I go, a couple low roundhouse kicks, get him used to not checking or checking those, and I then change it up throwing a side kick down the line. If you don't like side kicks, get off this channel, because they work. Now I start playing with his hands a little bit, start slapping out of the way, going over the top with my own punches. It's a very annoying, effective way to fight. I call it mosquito boxing. And that was the end of our first two rounds. Like I said, regular MMA sparring, nothing spectacular here, just establishing a baseline. And now, let's talk about my second couple rounds of sparring. In this case, we're talking about plain clothes sparring. And as you can see, the only major change is I went from MMA trunks to cargo shorts. But the movement really wasn't that restrictive. As you can see, I'm still throwing high kicks pretty easily. And in this first round, I'm actually being a little shy about how much I want to move my legs. Not so much because I'm worried about the pants falling, but because I don't know if my shorts are going to rip or not. But, just so you know, they didn't. However, I noticed, because I'm not wearing a belt, those shorts are falling pretty much every time I move. It is worth noting that I was having to adjust for the shorts falling down pretty much every few seconds. And if I was in a real fight, I don't know that I'd have the wherewithal to remember to do that, or that I'd even have the time to do it. And here I go for the good old fashioned karate blitz. One of the most effective things you can do in MMA or self-defense. If you want to learn how to do it, stay tuned for next week's video. There's some advertisement for you. However, as you can see, my sparring still looks pretty much the same, if not a little better now that I'm warmed up. Here I go trip, go over the top, try to get full mount. Doesn't really work, he's getting a good guillotine in there. I'm not really in any danger here, but I don't like having his arm there. So instead of staying in the full mount, I go north-south and basically just apply pressure until his arm loosens up. And that was the end of round one. By the way, for those of you wondering what I had in my pockets, I had my keys, my wallet, and my little O-Light pen light, which goes with me everywhere, as well as my little Kershaw stubby bastard. Both of these are my everyday carry, and they are tools, not weapons. I use these to help me carry on through work, as well as if it's too dark outside so I can see where my dog is pooping. They're not weapons, because I'm the weapon. However, obviously, I could use this thing pretty viciously. Now, round two of playing close sparring is a totally different beast. Because by this point I figured out my shorts aren't going to rip and I can pull them up as they start to fall down. So now I let the hands fly and start trying some stupid kicks, like the axe kick right there. So there's not really much to say about this second round of plain clothes sparring. It's pretty much regular sparring. I'm just a little bit sweatier and trying to have a little more fun with my food. Right here I decided to be an asshole and throw a spinning kick right at Antonio's nose. 
I was nice and I stopped it. All I do is pick a booger out of his nose. I don't like to head kick people in sparring. But I do like to kick their butt, quite literally. Right here I need to issue an apology to all Filipino martial arts practitioners because yes, it turns out Gunting does work. When you're throwing it at an opponent who's throwing very slow, sloppy punches, you can totally interrupt and hit him right in the forearm. Woohoo. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for. Backpack sparring. So this right here is the backpack that I'm going to be using. This is the Rev Gear Travel Locker, and yes, I carry this thing around with me everywhere. And it is exactly what it says it is. Oh, and then my laptop was in there. I can carry two pairs of gloves, boxing mitts, first aid equipment, two books, and a laptop in that bag, and it really isn't that heavy. So, that bag goes with me everywhere. The important thing to remember with drills like this is that you need to replicate as best you can what you're actually wearing and doing in real life. Yes, I could have gotten a Jan Sport or some other backpack, but this giant Master Roshi turtle shell is what I walk around in, so therefore, that's what I had to use in this sparring drill. And now, it's time for some backpack sparring. Right out the gate, I want to let you guys know, yes, there is stuff in that bag. I got a pair of boxing gloves, some mitts, and some books in there, just for some added weight. But aside from that, this pretty much felt like sparring in a heavy-duty gi, which I spent most of my childhood doing. Structurally, though, I noticed this suddenly becomes less of a kickboxing match and a lot more of wrestling and grappling. Tommy sees those straps, he wants to get a hold of them and take them to the ground. And as you can see, he doesn't really know what to do once he gets hold. Yes, he's got some control of me, but he can't seem to utilize that to throw me to the ground. And, since I've done a few judo matches in my time, I kind of know how to adapt and then turn the throws back on him. And so that's exactly what I do. At this point I get a good body lock and I don't get anything out of it, but I do manage to control and tire him out. If you don't know anything else about grappling, learn how to do a few different body locks, tire out your opponents, and then become a total asshole in sparring. By the way, at this point Tommy really only has a side headlock and it doesn't quite work out for him. Again, I go for the full mount, start practicing the ground and pound, and then I let him go. Right. Now Antonio here was a totally different beast. This guy was definitely a bully in high school. Because all he wants to do is grab hold of my backpack, bend me over, punch me in the head, and then take me to the ground. Once I figure that out, my number one goal becomes to keep his hands off my back. But obviously, that doesn't work out. However, I've still got more experience than him in the stand-up wrestling, so I keep him from throwing me to the ground and from landing any cruel punches to the back of my head. But now, Antonio figures out the best way for him to take me to the ground is for me to take myself to the ground. So when I finally get that good throw, Antonio just lands on his back, uses the leverage of my back to keep me away from him, and then just let me tire myself out. I'm still trying to get that full mount, doesn't work, so I switch to a Kesigatami, and then I get the full mount. But there's still a whole lot of nothing happening, so eventually we get right back to our feet. And while this was a really brilliant plan on Antonio's part, what I don't think he counted on was the cardio required to hold someone on the ground like that. So now, he's pretty tired, he can't keep his hands up, and I decide to punish him with some mean kicks and some glitchy punches. Not a whole lot happens from here, but the round is over, and now I know what it's like to spar with a stupid backpack on. So, sparring in your everyday wear. It's important, because unless you're a professional fighter or hang out in a gym all day long like me, you're probably gonna have to defend yourself while you're wearing jeans or a backpack or a handbag or whatever. So it's important that you know how you would handle yourself in that situation. As you can see, the foundation that I had built in my regular optimized sparring scenario is what I was able to rely on as things got harder when I was restricted by the clothes and restricted by the backpack. If you don't have a strong foundation to begin with, everything you do after that is gonna be built on a weak foundation. You need to spend most of your time training in highly optimized, highly sanitized situations and every once in a while, throw the monkey wrench in. Me personally, I'll try to put out more videos like this, depending on how good this video actually does. But all that being said, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you wouldn't mind and you wanna support the channel, please be sure to open the description box down there at the bottom. There's a link to the merch shop where you can buy your own combat self-defense everyday wear, as well as links to gear and supplements and anything else that'll help you in your fight game. As always, it's been Rob from Combat Self-Defense. I wanna thank you for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done. And I'll see you next time.